Well, hello, cuties. It's me, Stefan, your host of a comedy advice podcast, and maybe your host of life. Here I am introducing Jim waking up. All right, doing a great job. And what is he going to do? Is he going to put on the socks or is he going to just walk straight to the bathroom? Who knows? We'll see. But we'll get back to that on the life of Jim on Spotify. A comedy advice podcast, however, carries a very special guest on its shoulders for this entire episode, not metaphorically speaking, just literally, because he is able to carry himself on his own shoulders. I've seen it happen and he is quite a philanthropist. That's not it, extortionist. Extortionist, I'm not sure the word, but he's flexible and he does so many things, marketing, comedy, and beyond. Zach Lyman, everybody, and what a gem of a guest he is. It's not the first time he's been on a comedy advice podcast. This isn't his first comedy advice rodeo. And you can tell because he just bucks right up. He stays on the bull for the whole episode. And boy, does he ride. Yeehaw, everybody. I'm just going to leave it at not that because I'm also going to say, please, after this episode, go on over, support him, listen to his podcast, see him live September 10th and 11th at Improv mania and while you're at it tomorrow is the big day that's right i put out two episodes because i'm just so excited about it trash or treasure 7 30 links are in the show notes 7 30 house of comedy it's going to be loads of fun that's where lamar mitchell jr and i are going to moderate as comedians go head to head talking about different topics and whether they're trash or treasure it's going to be pandemonium. I feel like I'm going to narrate for the monster truck rally. Monster trucks. I think I already did that in another episode. So I'm just going to do it again because why not if it works? No, nope, that's it. I'm done. All right, guys. Well, I am out of gas with this old monster truck of a host. So I'm going to park my monster truck and just let you guys off and into the episode. Here you go. Here's the door opening. <laughs> I'm not used to these stand. I was thinking of doing the same setup. Oh yeah. I was thinking of switching to some chairs and getting some, some just stands like this. I, yeah, I like them. I was actually thinking of getting some free microphones that you could just you know, have a seizure with, and you could just be wherever you want to be with them. But these are kind of cool too. The only thing that's a little restricting is the movement. Where if I want to lean to you, I got to just sort of like ah, move okay. my mouth into that. But so far, no problems. No other problems. In okay. Because yeah. I, I could do the, I could hold, some, I could do that now. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try it out. Maybe I'll have you come over. And like record. do both. Maybe I'll just be upside down with one of them. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> trapped hanging up like a cocoon. What if we just got rid of mics? <laughs> what if we just had no mics? <laughs> what if we, we had just... a podcast where we just came over and hung out together? <laughs> what if we brought silent films back? Just bring silent podcasts. <laughs> have that music. <laughs> I did see a TikTok today where like people were doing a podcast in a backyard. Oh. And they were like talking over each other, you know, like not good etiquette, talking over each other. And then I was like, who was like, they were all hanging out in a backyard and someone's like, let's get some microphones. Let's put this on the internet. And, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and it blew up on TikTok. Probably. Oh my God. <laughs> Beautiful. I, we could do just like one mic in the center and then we both get really close to it. Like me on this end and you on the other end. Like Lady yeah. and the Tramp, maybe. Yeah. Pretend to kiss. <laughs> no. <laughs> whispers hello everybody and welcome to a comedy advice podcast hello zach just oh god i'm clenching just <laughs> thinking of being thinking of the close. eye contact <laughs> like, i don't even look at my wife that much yeah in the eyes i mean usually it's like hey how's it going blah blah, blah. but like really looking at her yeah. really looking at somebody in the eyes is exhausting for me yeah is it for you okay it is for me yeah even are we gonna <laughs> Now that we've talked about it and highlighted it, now I'm I'm self conscious about I'm it. I'm like I'm gonna stare at that door behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pretend. I'm gonna do all the all the tricks you learn from uh, being on stage, where you're like, look at the foreheads. You know, I, that's where I was looking. That's I was looking at the forehead and the beautiful new snip. Did you get a little cut on the hairs? 
Yeah, yeah, recently, recently, yeah. Okay, I think I ask you that every time we meet too. Yeah, you did, and okay. I, I think every time I'm like, probably since the last time you saw me. <laughs> it's you know, it's a safeguard just to make sure because there have been times when people are like, you didn't notice my haircut. So now every time I see somebody, if it's been more than one week, I'm like, did you get a haircut? It looks good. You should pull that on someone tomorrow and be like, no one said anything about my haircut because <laughs> yours is so long now. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that's pretty great but you know um speaking of haircuts welcome to a comedy advice podcast my name is stefan satani that's gonna make the cut maybe i guess we've got a very special guest he's a nationally touring comedian a genius marketer and a podcaster of the zach lyman podcast everybody please welcome zach lyman thank you happy to be here Oh, I am pleased as punch to have you here. Yeah. No, I really I really was looking forward to today. I, I feel like we should do more things together. Yeah. Every time usually every time that we're hanging out, there are mics. Those are like <laughs> Yeah. Those are our chaperones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, getting up to no good. It's like, you know, at the dances in middle school, they're like save room for Jesus. This is like save yeah. room for sure, because there's a microphone in between us every time. This yeah. time two microphones. The only microphone brand I trust. The exactly sure, sure thing. I had to- <laughs> <laughs> Sponsors come raining in. This is beautiful. <laughs> but man, it's uh I feel like we could do more things together. Maybe grab a kombucha together. Yeah. Or um or co- no, we've done we've written together. Yeah, we've written together. And by we've written, I mean you've given me yeah, yeah, many yeah. tips yeah, on yeah, my yeah. writing. Cause I felt like I was wearing one of those visors and punching the numbers, you know? <laughs> oh, you were doing great. And I was just like, duh, duh, what do you think about bananas? That's a good bit. And you're like, like oh, God. Well, we're going to have to really punch this one up. But, yeah, I mean, you've been doing comedy for a long time. 16? 12? 12 <laughs> years. I was like, how old am I? <laughs> I was going to say 16 half years and, uh, oh God, four full years. Oh. That was the equation I was going for. It was like okay. a riddle. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Also, if you said four years, I would have not corrected you. No. Oh my God. <laughs> if you went under, I would have been like, whatever. But you're like over, I feel like that's like too nice. <laughs> yeah. So like, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta bring it down. <laughs> like I'm starting to believe in myself. Now. Yeah. I have, too hey, real. don't give me confidence. Too real. <laughs> no, but speaking of confidence, I mean, I, we just went to an open mic together yesterday or the day before. God, the time is just flying by at the bridge. Yeah. Improv theater. Incredible venue. And mm-hmm. you, it was so cool seeing you in action because I've seen and I've heard your album on Spotify and I've seen you in other venues, perhaps, but at the open mic, I've never seen you in that environment. And you're just so confident. You've got this. It doesn't matter if you're working through material. That's just it's not to the point that's like, ha ha, getting that real belly laugh. It's still you keep me on the edge of my seat wanting to laugh. I'm like mm. really interested in what you have what you have to say. <laughs> Thank you. So. It's very nice. Yeah. I, I was thinking about that when we we're at the open mic that I was like, I don't think We've ever been an open mic together. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, uh, for the thrill of the game, I went up with brand new things only. And I was like, I no parachute, no, no, no safety net. I'm not doing any of it. I'm just, I'm just going to do new stuff. And if it bombs and I bomb really hard in front of these lovely people, that's how it's going out. You know, I'm just, I'm going to go down in a fiery flame. And, uh, yeah, it was it was fine. I like you know, cl- I got lucky with the first bit, kind of really yeah. connecting, and then uh, wrapped up with like a small idea. And so, uh, yeah, but I was like, I'm gonna really lean on the idea of like, I know this is funny. Let me figure it out. That's really cool. And I actually just came off hot from a pod with Rick Overton, which he an incredible incredible comedian, improviser, actor. He was in um, he was in a lot of shit. He was in Groundhog Day. <laughs> he was in The Office. He was Pam's dad, and he was in the league. He was in, he was just like sure small parts in, in other. I'm yeah. like I don't watch The Office, but I'm like yeah yeah Pam's dad got it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, you, you know what you fooled me because I was like oh he we're connecting here. yeah this yeah yeah it's great. <laughs> great we're gonna do the theme song Da-na-na. who but, was he in Groundhog's Day do you know uh he was the groundhog no oh. I'm, 
He, he I was, was like, well, that's amazing. <laughs> I actually didn't see the movie, so I couldn't You've tell never you. seen? Ah, oh, it's amazing. Oh, my you God. You would love it. Really? It's a great movie. Okay. It's an amazing movie. I, I watched it recently, maybe twice in a row. Really? Yeah. Which, is that the whole thing about Groundhog's Day is each day is the same? Yeah. That's cool. And I was like, how, about, movie how about for me, too? <laughs> <laughs> Let's live the essence of Groundhog's yeah, yeah. Day. He was the Flapjacks guy. Okay. If that rings any bells. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway, he just did... I don't. Have you ever heard of Set List? It's basically... Yes. Okay, he yes. did... I've he, seen it live. Oh, nice. Yeah. He did a special around set list where he just did 30 minutes and the for those of you who don't know set list it's basically like improv for stand-up comedians where the screen there'll be a screen and they have to take what's on the screen it's a title i think his first one was uh cirque de circumcision and he just had to roll with it and create material out of it and anyway he was talking about going with his gut just he didn't know what was going to go on but he went with it and it reminded me of you because you just went with those five minutes where it's almost even an open mic. It's, it's, you don't know what to expect. And so, and I think people may be not as into what you're going to say sometimes, not yeah. as engaged. Yeah. And so sometimes they're there just to have a drink <laughs> and then you turned on a microphone and you're like, what about lasagna? And they're like, I don't want to hear lasagna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like my Cabernet. Thank you very much. <laughs> it does not go well with lasagna. I get it. I get it. Sometimes I'm sitting alone and then Alexa turns on and I'm like, nope, I didn't ask to play jazz music today. No. Yeah. But hey, that might be a good way to expand the reach of open mics. Just plug in a mic to an Alexa channel and then <laughs> Alexa just starts playing. <laughs> so what's the Work deal? On with- that. Yeah. <laughs> Work on that API. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but thank you for saying that that uh, that you en- enjoyed the five minutes of me just figuring something out. Oh, it's very nice. Thank you. Thoroughly, man. And it's just it begs the question of when you are not sure for five minutes if this new material that you've never tested before is not going to work. How do you maintain the confidence throughout, even if there's a little laugh gap, if you will, where it's just silence? How do you maintain that? What do you Tell yourself on the inside. Uh, well, I think it's like some. Sometimes it's just tips and tricks that you've learned over the years, where you're like, "Look, I can do a callback right now, or I can okay. end this, or I could do that." And then even when I was I was doing one of the bits, I was on stage trying to think it out as I was doing it, and I realized I didn't have a good ending. So I said mm. the ending that I wanted. And it was just kind of like, eh. So then I decided to go longer with it and dig. And then I was like thinking of, well, this could relate to getting out of a relationship. Let me just dive into that right now. So then I just made up an editing of ending about being in a relationship that tied into it. And it's kind of just things like that with like using your experience. And it, it probably just gets easier as you get on stage. But uh-huh. um, just experience and, and trying to... Uh, I think still make it fun for yourself is part of it, you know, because it kind of triggers that part of your brain. I like that. I like that. It's just like, just keep fishing. That's how I remember when I used to go fishing with my dad and sometimes I'd be like, this sucks. I'm not going to get any fish. And he's like, just wait, be patient, you know, Mm. just keep telling jokes and then maybe the fish will come. And then punchline after punchline, a little rainbow trout would come in my basket (laughs) Yeah, and my dad's like, "What are you doing with the basket?" And I'm like, "Well, in this metaphor, it just went with my gut. That's what ended up being in here." And so, I uh, uh, teach a man to fish, and he'll do an open mic. I think is what comes. Yeah, out of this. teach a man to fish, and he'll find a basket. He'll find a basket and a punchline. And you did. I and a couple fish too. Was <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that joke was to scale, but um, scales scales. <laughs> I wanted to avoid the fishy part, but ah. you know we filleted that segment, and we're gonna we're gonna go into some meaty advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's time for that. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> is there is there anything? I mean, you've been you've got so much going on. You were touring. Are you still touring? Am kind I saying of. it weird? Touring. 
I, maybe. <laughs> can, I'm not going to correct you. Can, can you say it for me? <laughs> Touring? Touring. Okay. I feel you like were, I think you were removing the you. To- toe ring. Are you toe ring? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm, on a, I'm on a tour right now. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I still have some dates that I have to finish up around the country, but uh, the meat of it is mm-hmm. done for right now. Yeah. The fish of it really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I finished. Now it's just the chips part. Yeah. I got the bones. Oh, and, and okay. now, now we're just doing f- fillets, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Frying up that cod. <laughs> beautiful well that's great do you have uh, is the tour is it uh are the dates locked in or are you still locking them in I was uh ask. some stuff's not really fully locked in like i have stuff that are in uh in texas that's still like uh anyone that puts together their own tours will know that like sometimes it's just like a thumbs up from a dude and you're like hoping that's true, you know? And then sometimes there's like a contract. Sometimes you, you don't know always when you're putting together your own tour. Sometimes it's just like an email that says, yeah, we can give you 50 bucks and a microphone. And you're like, I guess, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I, there's some stuff in Texas that I still got to like a hundred percent lock in. Uh, got it. But yeah, in a couple of weeks I go to Anaheim. So, that's awesome. That's and ZachLyman.com is where people can get the tour dates. Yeah, ZachLyman.com, ZachLymanPodcast.com. Um, yeah, or anywhere on, on the interwebs. Nice. Social media wise. I love it. All right. You hear that, guys? And you can just, it's going to be in the show notes too, you lazy pieces of fish. Because oh, you so can just lazy. flop on over to the show notes and then just bam, get your gills <laughs> in that tour date. I don't know. Swimming on over to the advice, oh, Zach. God. This has been so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. Uh, we're gonna get into the advice, but before we do, I think you know how this part goes. Inspiration time. Yeah. Whenever you feel like you need a pick me up right before you're about to go on a mic, maybe you've run out of fish puns and metaphors, so you're you're just hoping for some inspiration because yeah. you're floundering. And Ooh. sometimes you need that a good inspirational quote. And I'm a quote guy, so I've got a quote prepared. But do you have any quotes that really get you through those dark days or help you through, uh, I don't know, times that give you trouble yeah. when Mother Mary comes to you? Oh, yeah. Beatles reference. <laughs> I don't know. I went from fish to Beatles. Yeah. Just the whole animal Two kingdom. bands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. One's more put together than the other. Yes. <laughs> Oh, freaking Beatles. But uh, also, Beatles, Fish, Animals, you and Lou Moon have a podcast. Yeah. And it's the best animal review podcast. Yeah, I think because we said so. Because, <laughs> yes, self-proclaimed, which I hate. There might be some truth to it. And the Ant Eater episode, <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Breathtaking. Thank you. <laughs> My re- greatest work. I retired after that. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you guys get the inspiration to review animals? Uh, I want to, I'll, I'll give Lou the credit. I think Lou okay. came up with the original idea and I think I, I just kind of added to it or helped sculpt the idea into okay. not just maybe roasting animals, but actually giving reviews. Um, I like that. So Something Lou, like that. Okay. With Lou being the zoologist, he yeah. directed me because I thought it was zoologist. Yeah. I noticed that you paused a second. Just to make sure you would say oh, man. the right word. I listen to the, if you guys don't know, I listen to almost every episode oh. of this podcast. Oh, warms my, it warms my heart to hear that because it's you and my mom. And I'm like, <laughs> Zach is so much better, so much funnier. My mom's pretty funny, um, but you are way better. So thank it, you. It, it warms thank my you. heart. When my mom's like, I listen, I'm like, you're supposed to. Yeah. You're my mom, but yeah. you're, you're my Zach. And <laughs> So I listened to the <laughs> recent episode with Lou and I heard him correct you. And I was like, man, he is, uh, I know we're talking animals, so I'll say it. High horse, you know? Oh He's yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. yes. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> How about, mean, whoa, Lou. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Lou. He was a big naysayer on that <laughs> one. <but laughs> no, it was a great episode. It was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, it was funny to hear you guys talk about animals and animal review podcasts, but. 
Yeah, no, it's it's uh, we love doing it, and uh, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. I am, and I'm so glad that you went in there to <laughs> put the reins on Lou, where I could see how Lou could come in real hot and just want to roast every animal out there. Yeah, but he's I, got strong thoughts about animals. Oh man, I didn't go realize... back and listen to the horse episode. Oh my <laughs> gosh, yes, he's very does not like horses. This yeah. Lou. Which, fair. I'm not a huge fan of horses either. Okay. But, I mean, horses really paved the way. <laughs> for roads? <laughs> for a lot of roads, for car- really. <laughs> for <Yeah>. cars? <laughs> and for cars. <laughs> if we didn't have horses, I feel like we would be, so we'd still be in Europe. <laughs> yeah, we would uh, I, not be far. <laughs> we'd be like, Hello, this is a comedy of your voice podcast. I would have... Prob- hopefully not that ugly of an English accent, but it would be something around there. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, do you ever wonder what you would be like if you had a British accent? Do you no. Know? Never. No. Any accent? No. 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 Not even like a Boston accent? No. Dude, it's Zach Lyman over here. What are you doing? Go socks. No, not even. Nothing. I- okay. Well, you've got a great voice. Is that why? Oh, thank you. No, <laughs> that's not why. You're like, I try to just drown out my voice. Yeah, yeah. As much as yeah. Possible. I try not to think of myself at all, ever. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what if you had. No, nope. <laughs> no, 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 no. I shut no. it down. <laughs> all right, so quotes. <laughs> Do you have. Maybe you need some more quotes in your life. Do you have quotes in your life? Are you a quotey? Yeah, I love quotes. I oh, love quotes. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely a person that likes to look them up from time to time. Okay. I also enjoy, if I'm reading someone's book or something, I might go and look up quotes by that person. Mm. I like doing stuff like that. Okay. But like my memory is so bad. I have like horrible memory. So there's only a few that like really ever stick in my brain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one that I've been thinking about a lot lately is... Uh, uh, you want me to just say it now? Please. So, okay. Yes, All absolutely. Right. No, uh, is the uh, Charlie Chaplin quote, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Oh. Oh, I love that. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. And I agree with it because I don't think I've gone a day. This is a great thing to say. I don't think I've gone a day without laughing for years. Really? You, yeah. You, Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I I can't say I don't know if I've ever gone a date without laughing. I don't know if I can say that either. I've had so I mean we've all had some rough days, but I think I may have laughed every single day I mean, of I, my life. I've been extremely ill and still been like I'm going to make a joke about this thing. <laughs> I I think I may have even laughed in the womb. I may have oh. just been cack my Oh my God, he's cackling. Yeah. And she thought little, I was kicking and you're like, no, no, no. I was like, ha, 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 ha. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's how it went down. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. And uh, yeah, and that's how the laughter was born. So I think it's beautiful. And if there is anybody that goes a day without laughing, what are you doing with your life? Mm. Have some more comedy, especially if you're listening to this podcast. I th- Well, you're in the right place. You've come. We're welcoming. We're welcoming you with open arms and fins. And please stay a while, bathe, and clean yourself with our daily. Just <laughs> daily. Yeah, that's just the hygiene, <laughs> public safety announcement. This is just we cut the comedy out. It's an advice podcast. Yeah, whoa, whoa. You should be doing that daily. <laughs> please behind the ears, please. For the love of God, we can see you, Tim. And it's not pretty, but that's a great quote. A beautiful quote, in fact. And it brings me to the quote that I have prepared here. Mm -hmm. It's not by any person. It's actually by a robot called InspireBot that uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to humans. Mm. And it just digs deep into Marvel Comics and C.S. Lewis and not DC Comics. Of course not. No, no, no. no. We don't like those. And maybe the Torah, (laughs) New York Times and what about uh, the new york Times bestsellers oh no it hasn't gotten there yet the next huh? patch will allow it to get into there but right, right now good to know it's a little bit of a blocker so sorry uh jane austen and uh 
I want to say David Ballstein. I mean, just name anyone. Just <laughs> written a book. I'm, I'm so, yeah, I don't know any. God, there's like one mm. John Grisham. Okay. I feel like he's on there a lot. <laughs> I've never read a John Grisham book, but I feel like he's. Do you constantly... read a lot? No. <laughs> are you surprised? I'm like, are you just reading the, <laughs> the list all the time? <laughs> are you just keeping up with the list? So it's seeing if like... you pop up in there. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I'm just really curious about who's on there, but I don't care to go into the. <laughs> like, hmm, good job, Grish. You made it one more time. <laughs> Dropping down, I see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, Grish. But anyway, (laughs) so this quote this week, we're going to interpret it. It says, um, there are bad men and there are okay men. (laughs) And that's all. That's it. Inspirebot cut us off there. No good men, apparently. Mm. Just bad men and okay men. So, Zach, how does that reverberate inside of you? It really hit home for me. (laughs) It did. Immediately, I just pictured... Okay, if you don't know, a lot of my family is... uh, Okay, man. Farmers. Oh! And I'm from South Dakota, and a lot of my family is still very from South Dakota. Okay. uh, (laughs) So I just immediately pictured a family member of mine wearing a cowboy hat, driving a truck, and just just muttering that to me <laughs> as advice of me being like, I don't know, man, my friend, he, he's doing this thing and this is happening. And then he just interrupts with, there are no good men. There are bad men and there are okay men. <laughs> A wise robot once told me. <laughs> <laughs> I read it on the internet somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> A wild Reddit thread after three days <laughs> told me there are bad men and there are okay men. Is that wait? What's a South Dakota accent? Is it what you have? Because yeah, I want well, that. I want that. No, is no. that what you have? Is, <laughs> is that what you've been riddled with? Is that South Dakota? Yeah, accent? that that and like uh, then moving here to Arizona, it's like a weird mixture of. Oh, okay. It comes out from time to time. You can hear it okay. pop off, especially in my stand up. I'll listen back to my sets, yeah. and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> yeah, I can like hear how I said a word, and I'll be like, all right. All right. <laughs> cool. Because I've never, I don't think I've ever met anyone that's from South Dakota or at least admitted it. Mm. So I don't know what it's like. I it's don't very know. It's much like when you picture Minnesota, which is also very like almost Canadian. Oh, you know, pleasant. it's like very Midwest accent. Okay. And then like as the closer you get to Canada, it's more sounds Canadian in a way. Oh, okay. Okay. That's where the sorries and the aboats. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can meet people in Minnesota that say that, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, gross. So, yeah. South Dakota, Minnesota, uh, Nebraska. I feel like all that's kind of has that. They don't, I mean, I didn't know I had an accent until I moved here and people are like, you talk weird. <laughs> like, it's like <laughs> cool. The, where the maple syrup trickles down. I mean, you talk really cool. It's, I think that your voice, if I close my eyes and listen to you, it's I can hear your voice on a cartoon. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. I, I can. You could be on the next. And I told I told Chris Gethard this because he has a really cool voice, and I feel like you have a really cool voice too. Where you could be on, I don't know, maybe a Pixar film, a okay. short. Yeah. Yeah. And you could not be, the full movie though. Just no, not yet. No. Okay. No. Right. Let's let's <laughs> well, settle down. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Maybe I had 16 years in comedy. I- Settle down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I could see even a, even along a full feature film, you could be the main character and you're going through, I don't know, uh, some trials troubles. and tribulations. Yeah, trials and tribulations. <laughs> I could definitely see it. I could definitely see it. Okay. Yeah. I, I would love that. I would love to get into voice acting. What I'm trying to say is you're an okay man, Zach Lyman. <laughs> You're not a bad man. That's all I ever wanted to hear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that I was very okay. <laughs> I was hoping His stand up, for... very okay. <laughs> <laughs> the okayest. <laughs> well, I was hoping to hear it back, but since I'm not, we're gonna move on to the questions. We've got this first question. <laughs> Stefan, you're you're okay. <laughs> you're okay. You're an okay man. And 
you're an okay friend and pretty okay podcaster. Oh, if I just say so myself. <laughs> Can I use that yeah. as a quip? As a, as a little quote on my website. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that client from the Zachline podcast says, he's very okay. <laughs> he's, he's, he's super okay. Awesome. Well, now that my spirits are lifted, we're going to move on to this question. It's from okay. Reddit. It says, how do I get rid of rotten Cheeto smell? <laughs> Hi, this is a problem I've been having with my youngest brother, 12-year-old male. <laughs> Since, right. since we moved to our new house, he hates showers, so he doesn't shower often, <laughs> like once every two weeks. However, because of that, almost everything he lies in has a smell of rotten Cheeto. By that, I mean like my bed, his bed, the sofa, the desk drawers, everything. I'm tired of constantly cleaning most of the furniture and blasting my clothes with Febreze. So, how can I get rid of it? For a week at least, if possible. Thanks. He's He's 12? 12, 12 years old, the brother. And a stinky 12 at that. He's aged not nicely. Yeah, that's horrifying. We got to get this kid to shower. Yeah, I uh, I always fear that I smell. And I think it's because I hate smelly things. Me too. I'm constantly like, I'm, you know, clearly doing the daily showers that, sometimes twice a day. <laughs> and, uh, you gotta in Phoenix. Gotta. Yeah. And so I just, uh, I, I, this is a fear that I had of if I moved in with roommates, I didn't know. I'm like, what if they smell bad? Oh, like man. what if the place reeks? Because we've all been to a friend's house and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I get, I get, okay, you're living this way now. <laughs> I, see, I see why people usually invite you over to their house. It's so true, man. I remember, well, this is the opposite because I remember when I went over to my friend's house. Yeah. And his house always smelled like fresh laundry. And it was such a pleasant smell. And then years later, I was like, oh, my God, my house didn't have a smell. Was it? The bad smell? Yeah. Were was you, I? Were the smelly kids? Was I the rotten Cheeto kid? <laughs> yeah. And it, it's just really, whenever I talk to people too, it's not often because usually people are very hygienic. And however, coworkers, they might get a little too close and I smell the breath or even the little rotten Cheeto stench that they might have from not showering the night before. And I start to think, oh my God, could this be me? Because right. they, they obviously, they have no, no idea. idea. No idea. They're used to it, which is the main scary, scary part. That The terrifying. And what I'm thinking, what really worries me, like, should we as a society start to alert people when they smell? Should there be some sort of protocol when somebody gets too close to you and they're stinking up the place, they are intruding your nostrils yeah. with those bad odors. Yeah. Do, is there a point where you, just like something's in somebody's teeth. You're like, oh, you got some broccoli in your teeth. Right. Oh, you smell like shit. And then mm. like, ah, okay. Then mm. they, they clean up. They Febreze. They Axe yeah. body spray themselves. Yeah. I Maybe? Don't, I mean, you know, if you got to be an okay man. And say things like this. That's, it's really, it's like Batman, the okayest of superheroes. <laughs> He's the hero that we need, but don't deserve. Mm. So maybe like Batman, you could be very surreptitious about it and just in the whoosh yeah. of an eye. Yeah, yeah. Is that how eyes go? Do they whoosh? I don't know. But if you whoosh by in the blink of an eye, you smell. And then they get the message. Like, ah. Who said that? But then they start to think more importantly, was it true? What about this? Tell what me. if there was a service? Okay. Where you just put them into a database. Okay. And then they get a guy that shows up at the front door in a little hat. Okay. In a hotel, like he works at a hotel type of outfit. To get the picture fully painted. I'm I'm stuck on the little hat. Is it like a hat where the bill isn't fully developed, or is it like no, a little it, Abu hat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So just a little hat okay. that matches his hotel old classic hotel uniforms. Nice. And then he, as if you have a telegram, opens up a thing that says, "Hey, listen, you've been added to our database as the smelly person. Just letting you know." You're gonna and have to go. Door to door, all your neighbors, and let the neighborhood know. No, no, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. no that's it. It's just discreet that way. 
Just a knock on the door. Hey, someone recently thought you were smelly. Oh, That's man. That's it. And then they get and they leave. Okay. So, so can they correct their behavior and get their records expunged? Can yeah. they be? Yeah. Okay, so they can clean up their acts. Yeah. And their body. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is great. I like this. It's like a nice little... I think it would be cool instead of a hotel garb, maybe like a big nose, something it's just like, like a soft, clown, soften the blow. Yeah, like a clown. I was thinking the whole body is Might a, a scare giant them straight. nose. Yeah, <laughs> like the nose from Nickelodeon. You know, oh, from okay. Of the Hidden a Temple. giant nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They already have the slime coming out of the nostril. Yeah, but I like the little clown nose. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A little fun with it. So just the hotel like, attire, but with a clown nose. Yeah, like you smell. And then leaves. I like it. <laughs> Squeaky shoes. Too. Okay. This is great. This is really good. So maybe, so enter this kid in the database. <laughs> what I'm thinking too is you got to make it, 12 years old, you got to make the showers fun, you know? And how can you make showers fun? Put a radio in there. Oh. Deck it out. Get, I a, get Bluetooth speakers. Show them, be like, we got surround sound here, baby. And then you want to play your Xbox? It's in the shower. Right there. Yeah. Hooked up. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nintendo yeah. Switch. Starlink Internet. Get your Wii in there because we've got Wii as well. And they're both clean now because <laughs> some good, clean fun. <laughs> I, I also think, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Um, maybe give him a reward if he takes a shower. Like, if you get to take a shower. I'm not big into rewards for things that you should just do. Okay. That's okay. Well, we know what type of parent you're going to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You got an A in geography? You did what you were supposed to. Okay, great job. Yeah. No ice cream. You just uh, get a... Yeah. Great. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You get to live in this house. And... Yeah. You get to continue to eat the food that I provide through my hard yeah. work. Yeah, you don't have to sleep in the shed tonight. Nobody gives me an A. (laughs) Oh, my God. Fantastic. That's great. The the other thing is if he doesn't... Okay, so you can't really coax him with rewards then. Maybe punish him with uh, water balloons. You'll just have to go full assault with water balloons. Pack one up instead of one with water, one with shampoo, Mm. one with conditioner. That's a good move. Just every day, as soon as he, as soon as you wake up, you just go in there and you just hit him with him. <laughs> a great way to wake up too, right? No alarm. Just morning, dude. Bam, 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 and then he's clean. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, that's beautiful. Okay, all right. Well, I feel like we have rinsed out all of the obstacles and we're ready for the next segment, which is. A new segment. It's called Product Placement. Zach, we are debuting the segment for you. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. And this is where I have chosen three products from Amazon randomly. (laughs) And there are going to be three different scenarios. And you get to choose which product you're going to place in the scenario to make it better. The best scenario it can be. Okay. All right. We're going to get this. I think I kind of get it. All right, let's we're, see. We're let's see. <laughs> okay, debuting these products, we just we've got I've got a link in case we need any visual aids, but we've got the Potterama electric flopping fish. Of a uh, classic, it's beautiful. Ten, ten. I was gonna say ten feet, five inches, but <laughs> ten inches. <laughs> it's a built ten- a lot of cabinets lately, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a ten foot fish, and it's a moving cat kicker fish toy. So just the. Okay. Automated flopping fish. I love it. Beautiful. All right. The next one, the Beckham Hotel Collection bed pillows for sleeping. Ah, perfect. Okay. Um, Then we've got the Aqua Forno portable barbecue and smoker and fire pit and oven. It's an all in one. (laughs) All in one by Aqua Forno. I think Aqua is water, so I don't know why that word is in there. But hey, why not? It's like when people... When people, what are those called? Those fryers everyone's getting? Oh, the air fryers. Air fryers. And I'm like, 
they like don't understand how their oven works. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, it's an air fryer. It fries with the air. And I'm like, you've never used an oven. <laughs> Let me introduce you to broil. The broil yeah. setting. Let me teach you some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like, the water, it, it barbecues. What does it barbecue? <laughs> well, let's give a huge round of applause to whoever it was that was marketing the air fryer. Because Genius. That guy is like rolling in the dough. Right yeah. Now. It's like Scrooge McDuck rich. Yeah, right yeah. Now. Where oh. he's like, I know we've all had ovens for decades. <laughs> but what if I just made it where you could just do a handful of things at once? <laughs> oh, my God. Genius. All right. All right. Then the next thing. Easy inflate luxury double high queen air mattress with built-in pump. Ah. Oh. It's a queen size. So send me these links. I'm going to buy them all. Oh, they're going to be the show notes. We're going to get a kick out of this one. So we've got the flopping fish, the hotel collection of bed pillows, uh-huh. Aquaforno portable barbecue, smoker, fire pit, oven, all yeah. in one, and the luxury double high queen air mattress with built in pump. If we get all these, that's just one good slumber party. Oh my God. Oh, no, dude. This is like camping wherever you want it to be. This is great. And fishing, really. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, Paul, I got one. Okay, so first scenario is your girlfriend. You guys get in a tiff. Oh. She, we, you fight. Words are said oh. that can't be unsaid. She says, Zach, I'm leaving you. Mm. But all is not lost because you scramble over to her house and you win her. You want to win her back. And just like John Cusack. With the radio over his head, the beat box, the boom box, you've got something else that you're trying to bring to redeem her. So you got fish, pillows, smoker, all in one, and air mattress. Yeah. Which do you bring? I'm going to go, for me, I, I, it's not the funniest choice. Hey, that's But okay. I think it's the best choice for the situation. Please. Is the aqua barbecuer. Oh, Okay. I bring that over. She sees it new in the box. And on top of that, I got plenty, plenty of things that I'm going to smoke, barbecue, oven, oh. portable. <laughs> and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make her a feast that she won't forget. Dude, I love that. That is so good. You know what? Maybe you could still have it in the box. I liked it in the box. But then you could do a little grill beforehand. Have like a little chicken breast in the form of a heart, mm. and then have it in there so that when she opens it, probably a lot of smoke is going to come out because I don't know if you should keep it in the box. But there's also going to be a heart. Maybe you could have chicken nuggets that form the words "I'm sorry," "Oh, take me back," "Love you," yeah, and um, and then she's like, "This is the most delicious apology yeah. that I've ever, ever received." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach, you're back in my life. I'm back. I'm in it. I'm oh. cooking, baby. Oh, you're cooking. We're cooking. They're cooking. We're all cooking. Oh, God. What a great choice. Good choice. Okay, scenario two. Rude guy. You're in the airport. You're ah. ready for your flight back to South Dakota. One of those bad guys. To see, yep, a, a real villain mm. of Sky Harbor. And he just comes in, thunderous in that sky, and he cuts right in front of you. You're zone four. Zone four is right about to be up. He's clearly zone six. Ah, and he's like, uh, 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 coughs his way in, yeah, right in front of you. Yeah, you've got one of these four very amazing products. What do you choose, and why? Okay. Well, well first, how do you feel? How does a how does a cutter make you feel? Ah, uh, gross, gross, gross. Like dirty. You just want to wash. Yeah, it I want to wash it off. Oh God, just got all this. I gotta cut. get clean. Oh, that is... energy on me. I can't be walking around with that energy. That's on the me. worst energy. Also, just like I already knew that it was <laughs> just a just a guy just coughing his way in. I knew it right away. I could sense it. So it was like, you know what? I you know, and I ah oh, man. A young Zach would be petty. A really? young Zach would be petty. Not in it I'm not a petty guy anymore. I you know, I let things go. I move on with life. What changed? 
you know, just, I, I think, you know, getting to know myself and the only accent that I ever want, you know? Oh, oh okay. And uh, <laughs> just getting to know me and growing as a person and just becoming a, you know, an okay man. I like Is, uh, I think, what happened. And 40 Steps to Being an Okay Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By Zach Lyman and Stefan Satani. <laughs> yeah, we go, right? <laughs> just to get on <laughs> bestsellers. <laughs> Move over, Grish. We're coming over. <laughs> Get off that list. <laughs> oh, God. Who reads John Grisham anyway? He's got like 50 books. He's just doing it for himself now at this point. It's like, why are you being a New York Times bestseller hog? Because that's what I think. He's just cramming up that space. When I feel like Zach Lyman and Stefan Satani should be up there on that list. That's right. 40 steps to being an okay man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's get that GoFundMe going. <laughs> do it, yeah, Kickstarter. Let's do this. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, does you really need to be a good man? No. An okay man is good. Also, I have a theory that people that walk around saying that they're good or great men, normally not not the case. They, like, are not good listeners or, you know what I mean? Like, they're usually there's, like, something clearly, but they're like, I'm awesome. And I'm like, you're never going to work on yourself. I, I, yeah, exa <laughs> exactly. I'm awesome is basically the thing that said after was, was pushing that old lady down <laughs> to be able to yes. get my spot in line. Was that bad? You're a good guy, Steve. You're a good guy. <laughs> you're awesome. And that's, yeah. the, that's the type of dialogue that happens yeah, yeah, with yeah. good men. Yeah. So <laughs> there's always a reason. I've never told myself. No, I have told myself I'm a good guy. And that's when I'm trying to cover up the stink <laughs> of my bad actions. <laughs> Zach, you really stumbled onto something there. Uh, this is uh, comedy advice for you. This, <laughs> really. been, this, this has been episodes a, for you, really. <laughs> for all of you listeners, that's been an excerpt of chapter one. <laughs> Being good is overrated. Oh, okay. I have two answers to this scenario. Oh, okay. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> One, one's more like, uh, you know, okay. You know, when someone cuts you or someone does do that terrible thing yes. and immediately like you might have that spike of like, ah, right away. And then it, you know, it, it take you you can like, go or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, that height moment, if I stayed at that height moment of just mad, uh, I would take that flopping fish and I would put it in his back pocket and be like, this dude's got a bomb. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Even better if it talks and it yeah. says stuff that's kind of ambiguously menacing. It's time to go up river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh my God. I don't know what he's getting into. <laughs> um, I love that. The second answer is uh, I picture that he... Uh, has a briefcase. Okay. You know, he's cutting me in line, pushing me with his briefcase, you know? Oh, yeah. And as a uh, good guy, would when do. he's not paying attention, I slide in that uh, air Brief mattress and then I turn it on and I just make the whole thing. I make all of his important papers go everywhere. I love that. When would, just because I'm vaguely familiar, unfamiliar with. Uh, air mattresses, the timing, would that be when he's about to check in or would that be a, a, a long goof? So after he's put his briefcase in the carry-on, then it's just going to start exploding and then... I think, I, 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 I don't think, because if we're waiting in line still, I put it in, by the time he, he scans his phone, gets down the walkway and gets towards the plane, I think by the time he's like looking at the plane door, not in the plane yet... It's it, that's when it goes goes everywhere before It'll be, it gets on the plane. I love that. It'll be perfectly timed so that as he tries to bring his briefcase yeah. through the gate, it'll be it'll it won't fit because the air mattress will have deployed. It's so light he barely noticed because it's air. Yeah, it's really, what it is. Yeah, and then they're like, "Sir, I'm so sorry. That's not allowed here. Mm. We don't allow bombs and liquids and air mattresses." Yeah. We don't. So he's going to be like, oh. And he's not going to have any excuse. He's going to be like, I'm sorry. I'll just step out of the way of this young gentleman that was in zone four. Yeah. And then you get your laugh. You get the last. I get the last laugh as we close that door up. Oh. <laughs> I help the flight attendants close the door. Yeah, you close. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sir, we're still boarding. <laughs> <laughs> We've got zone seven through nine. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that's a bad man. <laughs> Throw some tear gas and then another air mattress as a decoy. <laughs> Where are all these air mattresses coming from? I don't know. All right. Well, we've got the last scenario. It's been an hour. You and your date, you and Cam, you're going out to a nice dinner. Uh-huh. Eating some gourmet. Well, about to eat some gourmet delicious food. You guys get your orders in. You know exactly what you want. It's going to be a delicious meal. Mm. However, it's been an hour Ugh. and no apps, no drinks even. The water, they they came by they filled the water half full and you're like well or half empty depending how you're looking at it but you're waiting there and you're hungry you're starving those hunger pangs are just attacking you like a monsoon thunderstorm Mm. and you're ready to eat so whatever your next action is i haven't pictured it yet but you're gonna need one of those products to be able to get that food what do you do ah man you know, this is what I do. I have a big old tote bag, right? Okay. That I brought with me. As, obviously. Of course, because I'm a prepared person. Yeah. That's, and Okay, out, men do this. <laughs> and out of that, I take that sheet set. I take the whole quality sheet set, all that stuff, right? Okay. I take that, and I go over to a guy I see that already just had his plate put down and i say sir this is 2.99 on amazon <laughs> this is almost 300 dollars sheets i will trade you for that steak and potatoes i love it <laughs> i th- you could also trade him for the flopping fish You're like <laughs> does that not interest you here's my floppy fish <laughs> this salmon is so fresh it's still flopping <laughs> Put him in water. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I think that was that was beautiful. <laughs> I feel like, Zach, you have conquered society's biggest trials and tribulations. The, Pixar, I feel like we just made a movie for you. <laughs> First trial, girlfriend breaks up with him. Second trial, trying to get on a plane to visit. Girlfriend, guy cuts in front of him. Mm-hmm. Third trial, gets the girlfriend back. However, that redemption meal just doesn't come. Mm. And so a man's got to eat. Can I pitch a name for this movie? Please. Zach Lyman, the prop comic. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I'm carrying all these things around. (laughs) Zach Lyman, the other Gallagher. (laughs) (laughs) The third Gallagher. We thought it was strange his brother copied him, but what about another man that's not even related? <laughs> he just he squashes watermelons with floppy fish. <laughs> with objects he buys on Amazon. <laughs> Will this dining room set do it? <laughs> Coming soon yeah. to a theater near you. My YouTube channel. It's just me smashing watermelon with things I buy on Amazon. Instead of like that channel where they blend things, it's like the opposite. Will, will it smash? <laughs> oh my God. You could be like the ShamWow guy or the, the Chop guy. Oh, man. Yeah, you never wanted to eat a salad, but now you can. Chop. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what you could do with the bed sheets or whatever, but you'll figure it out. And that's the movie Pixar. You'll regret this if you. Well, that's a good way to sell it with a threat. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm it not would, working with him. It would be most unfortunate <laughs> if you were to pass up on our Pixar idea. Oh, that accent is getting real weird. All right, <laughs> call us Pixar, please. <laughs> I've been trying to contact you for so long. All right, next question we've got, and last question. Oh my God, it's so long, but we'll get through it. How to handle the youngest sibling. I'm the oldest. I have a younger sister and even younger brother. My parents owned a restaurant for his entire life, so they're pretty much never home. As a child, I was disciplined, as all children should be, and I was made very aware of what is right and what is wrong. My brother, however, has never been disciplined, and it shows. He's very loud, overly friendly towards strangers, does what he wants with no sense of right and wrong, and is overall destructive to the point where if he finds something you bought, he will claim it as his 
put it through the gauntlet and be done meaning you will get it back broken there's a lot more here that i'm <laughs> could read but <laughs> please help me with this help 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 that's the end of the question for me yeah was that enough context zach yeah okay all right so we've got we've got a bad younger brother just full of rap scallion just so mischievous and yeah. he needs to be taught right from wrong do you think the sister can do it do you think a sibling can be that parental figure i feel like they can't feel like yeah i feel like how about you can but should you mm. you know like why is it your job to raise a str- like someone else now i shouldn't say stranger this is your brother but to raise another person yeah you know yeah why don't you the oldest clearly it sounds like you know maybe maybe you're old enough to move out on your own explore the world right you know right. get out of there oh stop having so much time around the selfish brother you're there's no you know you can just leave home and never look back you know I you like could that. really move on from these selfish people and let them grow on their own and maybe 10 15 20 years he goes listen i was a terrible brother but i've changed i've I- grown I like that. I was going to say, just because I'm selfish and I like no change at all. <laughs> you stay right where you are and you remove the brother from the home. Um, find a pack of some sort of animal or find a new family for him. Put a Craigslist ad or something or yeah. get, him to the, get him out there into the world so that he learns what it's like. I mean, this is like every jungle book ever because there are like four versions of it where mm-hmm. Mowgli he was probably he probably had a sister that was like you know what I am sick of all this trouble yeah all these shenanigans that Mowgli is doing so I'm gonna give him one diaper and <laughs> he's going out into the woods and he's gonna figure it out and he learned the bare necessities yeah for being a solid human learned tigers are not to be trusted yeah and he came back pretty pretty good guy. Okay guy. Yeah, not a good guy. Yeah. I I'll have to rewatch. I haven't watched it in years. So I don't I don't know what the end outcome of that person is. But I yeah, if you you know, if you feel like you and your family could get together, have a meeting mm-hmm. and talk about leaving this brother at a water park and never coming back, you know. I love it. Put it to a vote. Like, <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Where should we? I mean, obviously, we all want to get rid of the brother, but where are we putting him? And we haven't had a vacation in a while. (laughs) Oh, my God. How beautiful. How beautiful, Zach. Just Bahamas. (laughs) One way ticket for him. You save money. Oh, you know what would be great? If you're going to leave me anywhere, if I was the selfish brother, leave me on that island, uh, the pig island, where there's just like wild pigs everywhere. On that oh, island. nice. Buffet. Leave, yeah, leave me there. I'd hang out. I'd be the king of the pigs. Oh, <laughs> man. I'd learn the pig necessities. No. <laughs> but no, it's beautiful. I don't know if you've seen those videos of yes, pig island. I have it's these like crystal clear blue waters yeah. and then this really unhygienic yeah. beast yeah that's it's just oddly... trying to swim <laughs> actually swimming pretty well swimming better than i could yeah just oddly placed like yeah. just two opposites that meet in and now forever how is that a thing i mean it's on my bucket list of places to go to do you know where it is or what it is yeah i uh <laughs> but i'm not telling you. <laughs> yeah i can't i can't legally <laughs> I signed a contract. <laughs> <laughs> there are NDAs in place here. We can't discuss it. That would be pretty cool. And I feel like, yeah, he could be king of the pigs. He wouldn't starve. And uh, crystal clear blue waters. That would be pretty good. Pretty darn good. Yeah. Okay. Make up his own language. Talk to the pigs. Start building houses. Who knows? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> the new pig emperor. Yeah. He could be. I feel like... What's the real difference between sending a kid to boarding school? <laughs> I like this thought. And an abandoned island with pigs, filled with pigs. Yeah. One is better for you. 
Oh, yes. And one... the other one is boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved in yeah. like one quick swoop. Yeah, that yeah. was that was beautiful, Zach. It, thank you. Go ahead. Were you going to say something? Oh no, never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll save it for next time. All right, next time because this time is coming to a close. We are leaving the island and coming back to the mainland being ah, the end of this episode. Zach, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for all the wisdom you imparted. Thank you for being an okay guy. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> I appreciate it. I I truly do listen to this podcast and absolutely love it. It's one of the podcasts I listen to most often. Oh, And uh, yeah, you're a great host. I'm very happy to be back on the show and thank you so much oh man i felt my lips pucker up with delight it was like a warhead you know a little mm, uh, shocking but then also very sweet once i got used to it this episode was amazing i hope you thought so too and please i know this just filled you up with energy helped you throughout your day so help zach throughout his day go see him live follow him listen to his podcasts and follow me too if you guys haven't already i'd love to be acquainted further with all of y'all so a comedy advice podcast on instagram see me live and say hi at trash or treasure comedy show 7 30 tomorrow wednesday september 8th and uh don't forget to subscribe leave a review tell your friends all that good stuff about the pod i really love all of the comments all of the feedback you guys are amazing even if it's stop you piece of garbage I appreciate that too, because you know what? I know you're listening. So uh, thank you. Thank you all, and good night.